Hey there. Hope you're doing well. So I have mixed up equal parts of A and B, Artist Resin, Medium Viscosity by Counterculture, and mixed it for about four minutes, put it in another cup and mixed it for about four minutes. So it's in my cup here. I have taken a couple of coasters that I had done some hand painted artwork on and I've put a flood coat on them and that took about I would say a half an ounce for each of those. So, so I'm waiting on my resin to sit for a little bit. I'm just uh, making sure those are covered. I've got some gold leaf. I'm going to mix up some gold with gold mica powder. So I'm going to put in about three ounces or so. And I've got uh, their chameleon. I'll show you the thing in just a second. I'm going to do about the same amount, maybe just a little bit less. I'm going to do a couple ounces of that with just a little bit of gold leaf in it. So when you put gold leaf in resin and stir it, it breaks up into little pieces as opposed to if you lay it on top, it'll stay in larger flakes. But when you stir it, it goes into these little tiny pieces and that's really kind of what I want. I don't want it to be a lot of big pieces. I think I'm going to put a little bit more gold leaf. I do it with um, tweezers because it sticks <laughs> to your fingers and everything around you and it's easiest to pick it up and uh, move it, pick up little flakes with your tweezers, which you can't see, but here's my cup. I don't want to drop that into the mold. I put some in the top, uh, on top of the resin, but let me finish getting my flakes. I'm adding my flakes here. I'm using um, Kim Kimco. It says copper flakes, but it's really gold leaf. It just says copper flakes. Don't ask me why. It's 10 grams, but it has lasted forever, and it's so fluffy and lightweight that you don't really use it up at a fast pace. So it lasts forever. I've got gold and silver, I mean copper and silver that I've never even used before. So I want to break all these little pieces up. This is a wine bottle holder so it goes over the bottle at the top and then you have wine glasses that can hang down from these slots. And first time I've made it so we'll see what it ends up looking like. This is the one I put the uh, gold mica powder in. Very shimmery, very pretty. So I put water in it to measure it and I it said I needed 10 ounces for this mold. So each of these little silicone cups holds three ounces or so, so that's three there. I'm gonna stir up this chameleon one, which is really kind of hard to tell what color this is gonna end up being. It's kind of transparent. It's starting to mix in there a bit. The chameleon is by Counterculture. I'm going to add a little bit more. So this is Chameleon Mica and it's Mars. So it's kind of a pinkish, blue-green, iridescent look. About nine ounces and I have one more ounce I can put in here. So I'm trying to decide if I want to use my clear or not. I think I'm going to hold it and make sure I can kind of do what I'm thinking I want to do. But, you know, sometimes with this you just kind of play it by ear. So this is the clear with the gold leaf. I have no idea what I want to do. I'm just going to go for it. 
So this is the chameleon. Got the clear here, and I'm going to pour some right around the middle. Now I've got this beautiful gold, which is very thick. Heat the bubbles real quick. I'm going to use my low temperature. So that's really about 10 ounces of paint, and it looks pretty now. Who knows what it's going to look like when it's been sitting for a while. Everything sinks and does that kind of funky stuff. Also, you don't want to heat the, uh, the mold with the torch because um, you can ruin your mold. Your resin can stick to the, the mold and not want to come out. So that's just a word of caution. I'm moving a little bit of gold leaf around just a bit. That one really had a big chunk in it. I could always put more gold leaf down in it. But I think I'm going to leave well enough alone. It looks pretty right now. I can't wait to see what happens. This may all come in over these rings. That gold may move in because usually as the resin sits, everything kind of goes towards the center as the chemical reaction happens, which gives the petal effect, but this may come in and kind of swim over those petals. So I have no idea what to expect. Of course, the reverse side is going to look different from the top side. You're going to usually have one side that looks prettier than the other, but right now it looks pretty stunning. If it would stay like that, I would be happy. <laughs> but I have no control over that, really. We shall just wait and see what happens. Unfortunately, the gold is coming over, so <clears throat> it is what it is. So you hate not to use any <laughs> of the resin that you have mixed up because it is so precious. It's so valuable. You know, you just don't want to give up any of it. So I'm just going to make a little puddle here. And who knows, I might could use this in the center of something down the road. You never know. So I'll be back later. Okay. turned out lovely. It sealed in the artwork I had done. This was color art pigment on the back so the top side was the pretty side and I embellished it with um, Deca Art 24 karat gold. So a set of those. I had one coaster that uh, was really pretty. I had leftover resin that had the gold and everything and I added it in and it kind of covered up the pattern but I resined a coaster that was pretty but the gold kind of covered up the pattern a bit. And here's my little puddle which I could cut into a shape, but it, you know, it turned out kind of wonky, but I'll save that for something. And like I mentioned, 
These cups are fabulous because with the silicone, the resin just pours out or comes out, peels out very easily. So that's the fabulous part about those cups. But the big reveal is this. So it, I let it sit overnight so it's nice and hard. It's not flexible at all because I wanted to be able to uh, see it in all its glory. I lost the mostly the petal shapes. Um, I knew I would because the resin pulls in towards the center just with the uh, chemical reaction. So just loosening up each of the six sides. I'm so excited for this one. And you have to kind of take it easy and get in all these little grooves where the wine glasses go. You can't just like rip the mold off because you will damage it if you do. But I'm loving it already. I could see a set of coasters that looked like this too. See, right there on that edge, I'll, if you get it heated near the edge, it's uh, there's a chance that you're going to let it stick to the mold. You don't want to do that. Okay. So I just got to get it pulled out of the center. All right. <laughs> it's very pretty. Just the way it is on this side. So I'm very curious about you. Oh, that's cool looking. It wasn't what I expected. But it has a totally different effect. And the cool the you know cool part about it is you can you can use the you know, the piece either way you want to, really. So that is really beautiful. I probably went, I don't know, I probably went too heavy on the gold. Or maybe not heavy enough on the chameleon. Um, but it's still a beautiful, beautiful effect. And the, the chameleon has that little bit of an iridescent feel right here in the grooves and along the edge here. And then it kind of shimmers through right here. So I'm pleased. These would even be pretty with this. So here's the, the question. How does it look sitting on a wine bottle? So that's what you do. Let me zoom out just a bit. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Click on the bell in the bottom right for notifications. Check out all the links below the video for all the products I use and catch me on the next video. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.